Our next guest claims that Hitler didn't know about the Jewish genocide. So please welcome English writer, historian David Irving, and in our Melbourne studio, Robert Mann, who's a senior lecturer in politics at La Trobe University. Please welcome. Thank you. Welcome, gentlemen. David, do you accept as fact that uh, some four and a half to six million uh, Jews were killed in the Second World War? I do accept that there was a very large-scale massacre, widespread, haphazard, mostly in Eastern Europe, yes. All right, so that's beyond dispute. How can you say that, that Hitler was the Jews' best friend? Uh, what I did, in fact, say was that uh, in view of the fact that without Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust, as it's now called, the state of Israel might even, might even now very well not exist. In this respect, of course, Hitler did the Jews a great service. You don't think that there may have been uh, an extra six million Jews if he hadn't come around as well as the State of Israel? Uh, you, if you look at all the documents that exist throughout the Second World War, the genuine, authentic wartime documents, the extreme, uh, the astonishing thing that I found out is that all the genuine documents that exist show Adolf Hitler putting out his hand to protect the Jews. It's quite extraordinary. Robert Mann, would you accept that? Adolf, Adolf Hitler put out his hand to protect the Jews? It's one of the most absurd statements that any person who calls himself a historian has ever made. Um, some historians have a reputation uh, amongst fellow historians and some seek notoriety and David Irving has sought notoriety. Well David, I mean, how, how do you answer that? Well, uh, let us wait and see the colour of his money, so to speak. Um, uh, I believe he's claiming that he has the kind of ev evidence which will disprove me. If he has evidence, it will disprove my claim that there is no wartime evidence that Adolf Hitler knew that the Holocaust was proceeding, then let him show it. Well, in fact, you, has to be good. you've offered $2,000 uh, uh, to pay anyone who could uh, who could prove present such evidence haven't you this is true for, for 10 years i've been saying let the rival historians who use all sorts of words to denigrate me personally produce the evidence that i'm wrong because of course they've been claiming for 40 years that hitler knew it let's see the evidence they base their claim on and it's got to be good and it's got to be a wartime documentary evidence robert is there evidence of course there is the one the, the point that david irving begins with which was long known to historians is that there exists no written order from hitler concerning the mass extermination. What there exists in numerous instances is evidence that Hitler, uh, from people like Himmler, the SS chief, from Rudolf Hirsch, the commandant at Auschwitz, and so on and so forth, of the, of the order coming from Hitler by word of mouth. Now, uh, David Irving uh, bases his case on one uh, document, mainly, in his book, Hitler's War, which he misunderstands. This isn't true. And, uh, and uh, well, well, perhaps at some stage we could go through his misunderstanding of that one document. But on the other hand, there is extraordinary amount of evidence that Hitler throughout his career from 1919 to 1945 was set upon the extermination of the Jews, that he came to power vowing that this was his aim, that he, he became the Führer of a state, an extraordinarily powerful leader of that state, and that that state did the most monstrous thing we've seen in 20th century history, which was to try and exterminate from the face of the earth a people. Then we have the, the, the head of the SS saying that Hitler had ordered him to do this. We get this from Himmler's doctor, who said that Hitler had pushed uh, Himmler into a, a policy which at one stage Himmler was even worried about, although he was an ex a, a shocking man. Uh, we get Goebbels numerous, in numerous occasions in his diaries uh, saying that, that Hitler is, is the champion of the most radical solution of the Jewish question, which of course Goebbels is referring to the mass extermination. It comes in a diary entry which is precisely concerned with this yeah. question. On March the 27th, 1942, in fact, which you misquote in your book quite scandalously. This is completely uh, untrue, but uh, carry on. Well, well, I'm interested to know in what way that's untrue. Well, I thought you were going to bring a diary entry which you paraphrase in your book, yes. uh, which says that Goebbels knew about the mass extermination. You do not quote in your book the, the passage which comes directly afterwards, which says, the Führer is, as always, the undismayed champion of the most radical solution to the Jewish yes, question. We're talking about a radical solution. If well, you are what a do Jew, you think the radical solution meant in the context of that diary entry. If you are a Jew living in Berlin and you're rooted out of your home where you've lived for all your life in the middle of the night and you're tipped into a railway truck and sent to the east, this is a radical solution. The thousand pounds which I am offering for any historians like yourself, and I've offered it for ten years, and I'm rather sorry you haven't brought a document of the category we're looking for, is proof explicitly that Hitler even knew what was going on. Sorry, can but I you, ask you, you who is going to be the judge please, of this competition? Please, let, me, let me finish. You brought proof that Goebbels knew, you've suggested that Himmler knew, you've suggested that all sorts of middle-level, mediocre Nazi criminals knew. But the important question is, did Hitler know? Sorry, you've misunderstood me. Perhaps I've you... understood you very clearly. What, what I have said is that both Himmler and Rudolf Hirsch and many other people, including After the war, Goebbels, they said this. This is not wartime evidence. Sorry, there, there is wartime evidence from 1940 coming from the personal position of Himmler 
in which it he says post war memoirs which are fake. I know the whole story. Felix Kirsten, the masseur, the real diaries are somewhere else. Oh, so really, if you rely on this level of documentary evidence... That you don't like is a fake, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but Felix Kirsten's memoirs are a notorious fake, and down under here, that news must surely have filtered through that the Kirsten memoirs are a fake. Just no. like the Hitler diaries, which are exposed in 1983. And Rudolf Hess's uh, commandant at Auschwitz is a Rudolf fake Rudolf Hess, after the war, wrote various documents trying to get his own snivering little figure off the hook because he knew he was going to hang because he was the commandant of Auschwitz. And the lots of Nazi criminals, Lots of Nazi criminals after the war tried to get off the hook by saying that Hitler gave the order. And I don't accept that evidence. It's got to be a war. All Hitler's other crimes, the killing of uh, mentally incurables, the killing of British commandos, the killing of Russian commissars, all those other crimes are documented in the files. Why not this biggest crime of all? Because not a single the page of evidence. Reason that, that Hitler did not obviously want to give written orders of the sort that would impugn him in the way that, that such written orders would. Well, this is a very, very now, feeble explanation. For example, explanation. I, don't, I, I don't know of the existence of written orders from Stalin in relation to the mass exterminations that went on in the Soviet Union. I, I don't even know that Pol Pot signed a direct order. Yes. There are mo many occasions in history when written orders... I imagine the Mafia bosses don't sign written orders concerning their ac actions either. The, if you are going to make a preposterous proposition that a written order is the only kind of evidence that would convince a, 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 a sensible and commonsensical person about this, then I think you're in a very strange position. Dr. Because Mann, you'll not probably asking... find then that almost none of the perpetrators of mass extermination have left the kind of evidence that you would accept. But Dr. Mann, I'm not asking for a written order. I'm asking for written evidence that he even knew it was going on. All his, Hitler's other crimes are documented at this level, from Hitler right down to the soldiers carrying out the job. But this, the biggest crime of all, after ten years, you historians have not managed to find one page of evidence that he knew it was going on. Wartime documents. And I'm not talking about what the general said in Nuremberg. D David, do you honestly believe... As an historian, do you believe that these killings could have gone on without Adolf Hitler knowing? This is the fascinating matter. I, of course, have spent ten years writing a Hitler biography, and uh, I had to address the question of whether it is possible for the head of state to be ignorant of major crimes like that. And uh, if you look at the Richard Nixon complex, it is possible that, just like Watergate, Hitler said, do the job, but don't let me find out. That I accept. But I, I do have to say that after ten years, when the documents have not been found, even by my most vehement and vicious opponents, even today they haven't found the documents, it's beginning to look more and more likely that he was a weak dictator who didn't know what was going on behind his back. Well, do you, uh, are all other historians wrong? Do you think that oh, no, they're not running with the pack? A lot of them are coming around behind me. Of course, it's a, it's a very vicious campaign, and the campaign is being fought out by the most ugly methods against me. Here in Australia, of course, I've been banned from several campuses. The students are not allowed to be, to be told the full debate. I brought the documents with me that I mentioned earlier that Hitler extended his hand to protect the Jews. Extraordinary documents, That's which extraordinary historians like Dr. Say. Mann have not used. Sorry, no, I, I think that given that there is a large audience that is watching this and that doesn't know anything about David Irving, I should say a little bit about his career. Let's, is... let's have nothing personal, please, because let us not no, reduce sorry, this I'm to a personal level. Political career. This is the level that my opponents work on. I, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about personal matters, of which I'm entirely uninterested. I'm talking about your public career. You, you have spoken before groups in America which, which, uh, which support the idea that no mass extermination took place. Why have you done that? I told those you very groups that, in the fact, the exterminations right had in taken Germany place. And I tried to correct their opinions. You were banned from Austria, I believe. I was, I was arrested. Was I was arrested by the Austrian Ministry of the Interior, a Marxist, and I am proud of it. There are countries where free speech doesn't so exist. He's a social democrat, I believe. He's a Marxist. Oh, I see. You were lost £40,000 because you defamed a convoy captain, I believe. In my entire writing career of 25 years, I've lost one libel action, and For I'm proud of it. £40,000, and the judge described you as, as an extremely uh, uh, difficult... And an arrogant young man, which I, I, you are no longer that. You're Nothing now. wrong with being arrogant, and I accept that I'm difficult. So you, you're not worried about the £40,000 that you lost in this action? Well, as I say, I'm offering £1,000 to you now if you can prove I'm wrong in this matter, and you so haven't who's succeeded. Who is judging this £1,000 contest? I'll, I'll give you 50 cents for what you produce so far, but it's not very much. Can I ask you, David, um, you're quoted in an interview with the Daily Mail in 1959 as saying that you're calling yourself a mild fascist. Yes. Uh, this is a man called Clifford Luton. He addressed me in the student union bar. I remember he said, Irving, you've done something really awful at university. I won't go into it. We had done a particularly terrible student rag. And he said, you strike me as being some kind of mild fascist. And I said, uh, Clifford, you can call me what you like. And he printed in the Daily Mail the next day the sentence, Mr. Irving, leaning on the bar of the Imperial College Students' Union, said, you can call me a mild fascist if you like. That's the way journalists work. Can Historians don't, don't work like that. 1959, you defended then, and you defend in Hitler's war, the idea that Britain was uh, wrong to go to war against Germany, which presumes no. the idea then that, that it would have been in the interest of Britain and humanity 
for, for the Nazis to dominate Europe. Is that a view I, that you take? The view precisely which I expressed was that we should have got out of the war in June 1940, and Churchill, in fact, did consider it. And, although and left Europe Although the, the paragraphs of the, of the cabinet meetings have been blanked out where Churchill appears to accept this. If the war had ended in 1940, six million Jews would not have been liquidated, of course. Well, that, that, uh, can you prove that? I mean, you're, you're a man well, that happened demands... after 1940, didn't it? Sorry? It happened, uh, the, 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 this great tragedy happened after 1940 because Sorry, the war you're, continued. What you're advocating is the abandonment of the peoples of Europe, including Jews, gypsies, Poles and whatever, to, to the Nazi overlordship. You see, Why you would have think, think that Hitler and the SS should have not then gone ahead with their radical solutions to the Jewish question, I do not understand. You see, I'm born in England in 1938 when we had a great and fine empire. We saw our empire squandered and thrown away in the war that followed. So, if so the war had ended in 1940, the British Empire would have survived and Hitler and Stalin would have been slogging it out, perhaps even today in the Urals, and I could have cared less. David, do you think Hitler was a, uh, was a bad thing? Hitler was a war criminal. He committed crimes on the same scale as I, as I maintain, on the same scale, as, for example, Roosevelt or Truman, who dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima, or Stalin, who bombed Dresden. The same kind of war criminal. When people get to that stage, they forget ethics and morals. Does it disturb you that, uh, that what we can only describe as right-wing right -wing ratbags in Britain uh, have flocked to your philosophy? Does that worry you? Well, also, left-wing ratbags come too. You should see the audiences I've addressed to the Fabian Society. Well, do you call yourself anti-Semitic? <laughs> Good Lord, no. No, I call myself conservative, but squeaky clean conservative, if you can kind of visualize that concept. Something better than Mrs. Thatcher. What, what's your attitude, might, might I say, to the colored people in Britain? Uh, I think it's a great tragedy for both the British and the, and the colored people who we imported as a kind of paid slaves to come and do jobs do, at the do white you British... Do repatriation? I beg your pardon? Do you advocate repatriation of I think this would be an, an ideal solution if they went back willingly, but they must be allowed to return to England any time they want. Would that be the ultimate solution? You're not getting the answers you want, are you, Dr. Mann? Sorry, I know exactly. You talk about benevolent repatriation, whatever nonsense that is. Oh, you're, you're very well informed. I wonder who gives you the information. I wonder who gives... I read. Like no, many no, no, people no, no, read. no, no, no. In fact, when you, you quote, wish to know, Mr. When you quote Irving, phrases like that, we then see the sinister hand behind you who feeds the information, hand, who feeds the information from London to you to try and shoot down my lecture yeah, tour. I, I, but reviewed, I regard myself as I a kind of bombing book, and I'll be happy to send a copy of it in but, 1978. I've if, been taking an interest in you for many years. Ah. Even if 20% of me gets shot I, down, Dr. Mann, 80% of me gets interest. through. Sorry? Even if 20% of me gets shot down here in, you, in Australia, for example, 80% of me still gets through and the damage is done to the academic historians like yourself. You have to explain why for 40 years you've been maintaining something without a shred of evidence. May I ask you a question? Why do you speak to groups that deny the Holocaust? Because I try to lecture them on the wrongs of their, of their, of their hypothesis. If you had read the speeches that I made, you would see that I'm telling them they're on the wrong track. All right, we've got to leave it there. Uh, Robert Mann in Melbourne, thank you very much indeed. David Irving, thank you very much for your time. Please thank you both. <laughs>